Hi out there, this is Steve, the inventor, and my newest invention is an active cooling system for the A7R2 and the A7S2. Um, the camera, which uh, if you go to um, cinema5d.com, you'll see that the comments there uh, suggest that the firmware solution that Sony has uh, given us, which is uh, using the um, firmware 3.0, on the A7R2 and 2.0 on the A7S2 may be addressing uh, the solution by increasing the heat tolerance inside the camera by say by basically tuning up uh, the uh, temperature sensor inside so it doesn't shut down so early. Um, this is a very very short-sighted solution to the problem because it doesn't address the issue which is the camera cannot dissipate heat on its own. Um, so for people that are shooting out in the field, and I have shot out in the field with this camera with this device attached to the camera and found that it works extremely well. Um, I haven't done it under all conditions yet because this time of the year it's kind of hard to find a hot day to go out and test the unit with. But um, taking it to a uh, bar, an open bar, where the air temperature would have been, I suppose, between 75 and 80 degrees, wouldn't have been any warmer than that. But with the active system, the uh, uh, camera never even got warm. It stayed pretty cool. The uh, Sony uh, 5100 that I was using as a backup and only filming very short periods of time got very hot uh, and actually came close to shutting down and actually filming this video in a room that's no more than, can't be more than 75 degrees in here, between 75 and 78, the camera shut down once uh, already after a 15 minute video. So I'm trying to make sure I get this done within the time frame. Anyway, so it's a very small compact uh, unit. It fits between the back of the camera body and the articulated LCD screen, staying well clear of the ribbon connector, which joins the LCD screen to the camera. That's at the very bottom, and this is nowhere near that, so you shouldn't have any problem there. After installing this a couple hundred times on there, I haven't had an issue. Um, after patenting this thing, I've decided to, uh, to go out and uh, show people it, and everybody that I showed it to were very impressed and wanted to get hold of one. Unfortunately, this design is specifically for the newest two versions on Sony. The older version of the A7R and the A7S, um, I will be manufacturing to those who desperately want one um, on my 3D printer and sending those out, but uh, the mold is going to be expensive for that, so I'll have to wait and see how demand goes. But anyway, it's a very well thought out design. After a thousand hours of designing and spending time with this and 200 copies on the 3D printer, I've come out with a very practical design. Now you'll notice that it uses a lithium-ion rechargeable battery, uh, 3.6 volt. Um, I t tested to a failure using a 650, as you can see there. Let's see, it should zoom in on there. There you go. 650 milliamp lithium-ion battery. I got two and a half hours of constant use with that. Now the batteries I'm sending out with it will be 1800 milliamp batteries and should hopefully double the, the uh, uh, time that it uh, runs, although it doesn't seem to be any heavier or bigger than the 650 milliamps, so we'll have to see how that goes. But I haven't tested that to failure yet, so I can't confirm it. But at least you're going to get two and a half hours minimum with the 1800 milliamp battery. So that's the main thing. So it's going to be two batteries, it's going to give you five hours of filming, which is more than most are going to need. Um, for those recording live videos out in the field, this is going to solve the heating problem pretty dramatically and guarantee that your camera stays cool. Um, uh, even in direct sunlight, this is still going to suck some of the heat away from the camera body. So um, worst case scenario, maybe you get only two or three multiple runs with this setup. But uh, um, I got about six runs without uh, breakdown uh, doing the uh, three hour video shoot I did in St. Petersburg filming a live performer. So anyway, um, as I see, the battery a, a, has a two-pronged position. This is the off position that it's currently in. The battery is, does not, uh, can't be disturbed that way. Now if I click it in place, you'll now see that the fan is running. And it's very quiet, even blowing air into the microphone. Very hard to hear, very quiet. So this is, a, I think, a very positive thing. Again, go to the second stage on the fan, uh, the battery, and the fan is now off again. As you can see there, it's off. And um, putting it in, in behind the camera is very quick, as I'll show you here. I've got it here. 
use the little thumb grip that comes with it, thumb grip, it's in place. It's locked in place. Now it's in place. It can't go anywhere. Very well put in. Okay, now if you uh, notice that the articulating screen in the back has most of its function still intact, it can go down a little bit, not as far as it would without it, but close, all fully up still. The eyepiece, let's say if you were to take this rig as it is here to, say, an air show or something or a car show or something like that, you can still use the eyepiece. Eyepiece is still usable. You can't quite get to the eye cup properly, but good enough to be able to use that um, in a pinch if you can't use the back LCD screen. So at an air show where it's very bright, you would uh, uh, most likely want to try to use the eyepiece. But uh, an air show would be where it would, uh, the camera would generate a fair amount of heat because you're in an environment that's going to get hot. Uh, there's no way around that, and this is going to help that a lot. The adapter that Sony has included with the camera, which is to protect the HDMI micro connection to the camera and prevent it from damaging the camera or the micro uh, HDMI cord, uh, also fits on the camera without any problem. The uh, gap is big enough here that allows it to join, and you'll see here in the picture in a second, boom, there's the picture of the unit attached. Um, it still works, so I'm uh, can, uh, making a mini rig with this setup will work fine. Uh, using a boom mic will eliminate any possible minute sound that the, the fans do uh, would put out. And so that's another uh, very positive thing. The uh, unit tucks in very well. The um, battery compartment is very solid. Um, so uh, it should take a little bit of abuse. You're not going to, obviously, it, it, if you try hard, you can dislodge it because it's, it's uh, it just tucked in there nice and neat. But it does, uh, will solve the problem of uh, uh, active cooling with anybody in the field uh, in a, a uh, normal environment, which would be between, say, 85 and 90 degrees. That would be, probably be a normal environment. Uh, I do have a laser heat, uh, heat uh, sensor that I'm going to use to test this further, but at the moment uh, I'm trying to get this in production and out in the field uh, by uh, end of February or March. Um, it's going to be going for about $150, $159, and uh, uh, the only problem I'm having is that I'm going to, I've got it in STL and OBJ file formats, and I need it to be in a STEP or E underscore B file format for manufacturing. So I'm having a little bit of trouble with that. Uh, so if anybody out there uh, uh, knows an easy way to do that, uh, I'd appreciate the heads up. You can leave a note there at the bottom of YouTube, or anybody, say any entrepreneur out there that might... Uh, might possibly want to give me a hand with this. We can discuss that on my email address. So email me there. There's the email address coming up right there. And um, we can discuss uh, any possible uh, help that uh, might be offered. But anyway, so it's it's um, it's going to work. I'm going to get it out there. I just have to get a few things, more, more things out there. But I wanted to get some feedback from the general public on this and see what you thought. Uh, the... Um, as I mentioned, the uh, 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 Cinema5D.com, they had uh, uh, mentioned that the solution was probably just a temperature tweak on the inside of the camera. And we have, uh, at NoFilmSchool.com, we have somebody that tried tried it and said, oh, my God, the firmware works. Uh, it, the camera doesn't overheat, and he's in the basement at 70 degrees. Well, I'm sorry. In the field, you're not going to be shooting most of the time anywhere near 70 degrees. You're going to be shooting much hotter than that which means the, the temperature buildup is going to be much greater, and uh, uh, you're not going to get multiple runs of 29 minutes, 59 seconds. I'm sorry, it's not going to happen in the field. If you're outside with the sun on the camera, 85 to 90 degrees uh, or hotter, uh, you need an active cooling system to keep this camera as cool as possible. So my solution is the most practical. It's uh, not a firmware you know, patch. It's going to uh, actually... Uh, actively cool your, your camera. So uh, that's what we're trying to get on the market. I think it's a, a winner. I think it's definitely going to solve some problems. It's small enough and compact enough where it's going to be um, very easy to use and, and um, very little nuisance to anybody who's trying to get a job done. Anyway, so that's Steve the Inventor. hope you enjoyed that. I'll be showing some more pictures at the end of the video and uh, looking forward to your comments and help. So thanks very much for your time.